Hello everybody, I'm Kev Bottomy and welcome back to another Minecraft Redstone video. Today I will be looking at a concept that I looked at a few months back and, well, it wasn't very reliable, but now I've worked out some kinks and we have a pretty cool pair of systems here and I can't wait to show you. So if we flip around real quick here, we can take a look. So on the right, we have the reliable lava clock. So if we flick this lever here, that will get this thing going. So we supply a constant redstone signal to the lava and the observers will pick up a clock rotation out of this. Now, beforehand, this wasn't exactly reliable because random ticks can affect the lava. And when they do so in the state where the lava is being updated by the redstone, these will detect the random ticks. Now the workaround was to hook two of them up to an AND gate, and then that way, if any random ticks go through, they will not make it to the output. Now, to be fair, there are not a lot of practical uses for this lava clock, but there is one unique aspect to it, and that is that it'll give an output once every seven ticks. So while you could do that with repeaters and torches and whatnot, this is definitely a fun way to achieve that output. So the second contraption we're going to be looking at is a little bit more interesting, but it is based off of the same concept. Now with the lava clock over there, we were taking the clock output with an AND gate, and that way we could negate the random ticks. Now in this contraption, we flip that concept around. We want to negate the clock output, but actually detect the random ticks. So what we have here is a random tick detector. If we turn it on right now, we will see that the lava will sync up. The first time you turn it on, it sometimes doesn't quite work right. But you'll see that the signal's going through, but the blocks are removed before the signal can get to the end there. However, if a random tick shows up, and I will do something real quick here to speed up that process, but if we see that a random tick goes through the system, it will trigger the redstone torch at the end. So we're going to set our random tick speed to about 300 million here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. So very fast random tick speed now. We should see a few more of these coming through, and when they do, you'll see the torch will shut off and we'll get the piston to react. Now, the other advantage to this system is it's actually expandable. In the current design, it's only expandable 15 blocks because of the distance redstone dust can travel, but I'm sure it could be fixed in the future. There we go, there was an output. We saw the random ticks in action. So that's very fine and dandy. So we'll turn that off. And then if we come over here, we can see this is a version that I made to be 15 long. And the reason you would want to expand it is if you wanted a more frequent output. Now, there aren't a whole lot of uses that I could come up with for this contraption. However, there's definitely one, and that is for map makers. If you enjoy making custom Minecraft maps, and you want a way to randomly spawn mobs at not-so-frequent intervals, this is your thing. So right now the random tick speed is still set really high, so we should see quite a few random ticks actually come through right now. So we'll leave this run for a little bit. It's still not totally frequent because a random tick will happen I believe every game tick for within somewhere in the loaded rendered blocks I may be incorrect on that correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments section but I believe that's how it works so right here we have 15 blocks to detect random ticks and if any one of them does it'll go through the system and come to the output but that is all I've really got to show off, now it's time to get started on the tutorial. So a little bit of a disclaimer for this design, it is definitely not the most compact thing out there. You can definitely make a much smaller clock in a much smaller space that works at the exact same speed. No issues there, it could easily be done. The point of this video is to highlight 
how lava can be effectively used in Minecraft redstone contraptions. So, I think it's a very fun concept, and with regards to the random tick detector, it actually works quite well. But we're going to get started with the tutorial, two to two to tutorial, for the clock, the lava clock. So, we're going to start off with a 5 by 7 area right here, and we're going to begin with our inputs, so we're going to place an observer like that with the redstone output facing outwards. Come around the other way and place another one just like that. Then we want a couple of blocks in front of it. That's an observer clock right there. And we can put our redstone dust on top. Then we want to take our glass or whatever block you want to use. All you have to do is hold in the lava on the sides just like that. Then you switch around, bring two more observers, and put them just like that with the redstone outputs facing down the length of the seven long area. Then from there, if you have glass like I do, you want to take that out, drop in some slabs or blocks so you can put repeaters on top of them, and you want those set to three ticks. From there, you want those going into blocks with redstone torches on top of them, and all you need is some redstone dust on there. Now you want a redstone repeater set to two ticks just to make sure you're getting a long enough output. And then you want a sticky piston, or whatever your output is, I'm just using a sticky piston, to output your output, if that makes any sense. Now, other than that, that should be the system completed. If you want to turn it on and off, you can easily move one of these observer blocks with a lever and a piston. So here you can see off, on, and then the last part is placing in the lava. Now this part is a little bit tricky. So if you come down, you can place one, and then if you get the right timing, sometimes you can just get it to work. But as you can see here, these are not synced up. Now, you have to sync up the lava because it is a slower clock. It can be a little bit tricky. So to sync the lava, all you have to do is get rid of one of them. And in survival mode, this will be a bit harder too because you'll have to break the block instantly and then place in the lava. So I'm going to try to do that now, and we can see that I have failed. So I'm going to try this a few more times, and I will catch you once the system is synced up. There we go, guys. Okay, so as you can see, I have got the lava all synced up, and because it is a 7-tick clock, it actually gets really tricky to place in the lava at the right time. So it definitely took me a few attempts to get. It is a bit of a pain, but overall, it's worth it for such a cool concept. So now we'll get started on the tutorial for the random tick detector. Now, for the tutorial, I'm only going to do the two-wide tick detector because it is completely expandable. All you have to do is repeat everything I showed you over and over again, and you can make it just fine. So. We are going to begin the same way we begun the other one with some observer blocks. We're going to come out and we're going to place one just on the corner like that with the redstone output facing out like that. Flip around another one like there. And we might as well just take care of the on and off mechanism right now. Grab a lever and a sticky piston and we'll flick it off just for ease. So then we take two blocks, put them into the observer like that with redstone dust right on top. And then we take our glass, put one right there, and right there to hold in the lava. Then we want to grab our observers, place them out just like that, exactly the same as over there. And then we also want to do the same thing with the slabs, place them down if you don't already have a block there. And then repeaters set to three ticks coming out of the observers. Then we want to place down some blocks, and this is where things change up. We want to put torches going upwards for the end gate, and then we want to put some blocks on top, and then also to the side, just like that. Then we want to take redstone dust and put it on top of all of those. Then we want to come down here, break those glass if you're using it, replace it with slabs or blocks, and then we want to put in some redstone repeaters set to two ticks. So from there we want to switch out and grab a sticky piston, 
And then we want to place those facing downwards like so. And then on the ends of those we want some blocks. And that's going to be how we're denying the clock outputs. So from there we want to break glass one final time, replace it with slabs, and then we take our redstone repeaters set to two ticks, and those go into some blocks with redstone dust on top, and then from there I'm just using a torch and a piston for an output. That should be the whole system completed, except for the tedious lava bit where you can never get a place at the right pace, but I'm going to try to, on camera, get the perfect timing here, so let's go, and let's see, all we have to do is turn it on, look at that, I got it first try guys, so if you get the timing down, you can get lucky, and it gets pretty easy to do, but that should about do it for the tutorial on the random tick detector. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I sure enjoyed making it, and I really enjoy making these contraptions. They're a little bit unnecessary, but at the same time, random tick detection is a pretty cool mechanic that I'm not sure if anyone's done before. So, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, because I really do appreciate you catching my newest videos. But... That's all I've got for you today, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.